Hello all, I'm Professor Dragonilich from the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine and welcome to this short presentation on systematic review uh, where the focus will be on sensitivity and subgroup analyses. As always, um, here are the objectives uh, for Module 2. So before we go on to um, uh, sensitivity and subgroup analyses, I just want to touch on this notion of statistical heterogeneity. So in the previous presentation, we went through um, uh, looking and, um, and interpreting a forest plot. Um, so one of the strengths, obviously, of a systematic review is identifying a number of studies and then being able to pull them together in order to get a, um, a large pooled uh, result. Now, we're doing that um, with the assumption that the um, studies are measuring um, the same outcome of interest um, and are similar um, in terms of uh, their design um, and characteristics. What we don't want to see um, is what we call heterogeneity. So um, basically, if, if the studies are so different from one another, uh, from a methodological or statistical point of view, um, then it raises questions as to whether there's any validity um, in actually combining the studies together in a meta-analysis. So when we do have a, uh, a meta-analysis, um, we're able to interpret whether or not there is what we call statistical heterogeneity between the studies. Um, if the studies are significantly different from one another, i.e. that is that they are heterogene heterogeneous, um, uh, then it puts into question uh, the validity of the uh, forest plot itself. Um, so in this particular case, what we want to see um, is statistical homogeneity. That is, the studies are similar to one another and so um, provides us with confidence that by pulling the results from the various studies, we're getting a, uh, a true and accurate representation. So there are a number of ways in which we can identify whether or not there is um, heterogeneity present in the meta-analysis. Uh, we can uh, look at the chi-square test. Um, uh, and so uh, a really quick way to do that um, is to see um, that if the chi-squared uh, statistic is larger than the degrees of freedom, um, then, there, then there is evidence of heterogeneity. Um, at which point in time uh, we'd be questioning the validity of uh, the um, meta-analysis and combining the studies all together. There are also a number of other ways in which we can um, identify that, uh, whether um, uh, statistical heterogeneity exists or not, um, and I'll indicate how we can do that um, in the next slide. So here we have a, um, a meta-analysis of um, um, uh, decision aids for people um, facing health treatment um, or screening decisions and it's looking at the impact of um, using decision aids or not using decision aids um, in terms of um, knowledge so whether it increases knowledge or, or decreases so by looking at the um, meta-analysis what, what we can identify um, is that decision aids um, seem to be associated with uh, an increase in knowledge now, what we want to um, be assured is that, um, the, that the studies um, are homogeneous. Um, that is, they're similar to one another. Um, one quick way um, uh, to do this, um, to test for um, whether or not um, heterogeneity is present, um, is to draw a straight vertical line, um, if I can, uh, between all of the studies. So if I keep on doing that, um, and I go all the way up, if my line hits all of the studies, um, that is, it passes through the confidence intervals um, of all of the studies, um, then it would indicate that um, the studies are similar um, and that there is no heterogeneity present. Another way in which we can look and identify as to whether or not um, heterogeneity is present is to look, like I said, at the chi-square uh, statistic. So in this case, the degrees of freedom are 25, um, and the uh, chi-squared is 207. So because the statistic is uh, much higher than the degrees of freedom, it would indicate um, that there is statistical heterogeneity present, which would question the validity of um, uh, the, the meta-analysis. We can always also look at the p-value. So in this case, 
this is, I guess, the one time in which we would not want the p-value to be less than 0 0.05 because the p-value of less than 0 0.05 in this case would indicate a statistical difference uh, between the studies. So in this case, uh, the p-value is uh, less than 0 0.01, uh, which indicates uh, the presence of uh, statistical heterogeneity, i.e. the studies are different from one another. The final way in which we can interpret whether or not statistical heterogeneity is present is looking at the I-squared statistic. So it's another um, a statistical test that we can use. Um, and generally speaking, um, uh, if we've got an I-squared uh, value of zero, um, it indicates no heterogeneity. Um, if, we indicate, uh, if we've got a, 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 an I-squared uh, value of 100%, it obviously indicates um, statistical heterogeneity. So having a, um, an I-squared statistic of um, 88%, obviously very close to 100%, which would indicate a strong presence of heterogeneity. So I guess what we can take from this uh, forest plot then um, is obviously the result um, seems to indicate um, that the, um, uh, the use of decision aids results in an increase in patient knowledge. But by pulling all the studies together, um, we're not actually comparing apples with apples. Um, there, is, uh, there seems to be some sort of um, difference between the studies. And so from that, we would want to conduct um, some further um, investigation. So um, the, the further investigations that we could do um, would either be a sensitivity analysis or a subgroup analysis to identify whether or not either of these two could um, explain the heterogeneity that we're seeing um, within our studies. So the first um, uh, analysis that we're going to talk about is sensitivity analysis. Um, and that's basically looking at the quality of the studies. So as I mentioned in the first um, presentation, uh, a strength of a systematic review is that we rate the quality of each study, um, either as being good, poor, or, or otherwise. Um, so that's the, the first type of um, analysis we can do, a, a sensitivity analysis, which breaks down the studies according to its quality. Uh, the second type of um, analysis that we can do is a subgroup analysis. So obviously looking at different subgroups within the study, so whether it be age, uh, sex, um, duration of an intervention, uh, type of intervention. So for example, in the previous study um, with um, decision aids, uh, we could break it down in terms of decision aids that are based entirely online, um, use some sort of video component, um, a paper-based, etc. So what we'll do over the next couple of slides is just explore sensitivity analysis. Um, so here we have a, um, a particular study looking at screening for breast cancer with mammography. Um, it's a classic example of sensitivity analysis. Uh, the comparison is looking at mammography versus no screening, um, and the outcome of interest is um, breast cancer-specific mortality. And so what you can see here is that the authors have grouped the studies according to the quality um, of, the, um, of the papers. So uh, the first uh, four studies here, um, they've um, identified as being good quality or, 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 or decent quality because they've been adequately randomised um, and so they're accounting for selection bias and detection bias and whatnot. Um, and then the second group of studies that we've got here um, is what they've identified as suboptimal um, randomised controlled trials or, or, or trials in which the qu uh, quality um, of the study is questionable. So if we just look at the first group of um, studies in this sensitivity analysis, so remember it's a sensitivity analysis because we're looking at the quality of the study, um, we can um, identify that um, uh, the pooled result here um, seems to indicate um, no real benefit or harm uh, in terms of uh, screening uh, with mammography in terms of um, reducing uh, the, um, uh, the rate of mortality um, in, in uh, the patients of interest here. Um, seems to be a, um, uh, a trend towards a reduction in harm, so you know, potentially a 7% decrease in the um, uh, rate of mortality, but because the confidence intervals include one, it's not statistically significant. If we compare that now with the other studies which were deemed to be not as good quality 
um, you can see that if we just limit the meta-analysis to these poorer quality studies, um, we seem to get a, um, a much different outcome. So um, the, um, the, the, the overall um, meta-analysis for these particular studies uh, would seem to indicate um, a quite a large um, effect in terms of reducing the risk of uh, breast cancer. Um, and interestingly enough, um, the confidence interval does not include one, so um, it would indicate a statistically significant um, uh, uh, beneficial effect. So in this particular instance, our sensitivity analysis has identified that the good quality studies are indicating no benefit um, in terms of um, screening, whereas the poorer quality studies um, are indicating a, a statistically significant benefit. Um, so the conundrum that we face then is do we just limit it to, or so do we limit our results only to the good quality studies, um, or um, should we combine them with the, um, uh, with the poorer quality studies, in which case we may get a, um, um, a, a different effect. So the final um, analysis that we just want to talk about quickly is a subgroup analysis. So like I said, a subgroup, we're looking at different strata or, or groups. So whether they be age, duration, type of intervention, etc. Um, so this one's looking at corticosteroids for pain relief um, um, in patients with a sore throat. Um, and they've broken it down according to duration. So uh, the first four studies um, are looking at um, pain um, uh, relief um, within the first 24 hours. And so if we look at the um, overall meta-analysis for those four studies, um, we can see um, a relative risk of 3.16. So in this case, pain relief um, is a good thing. Um, so an increase in relief, so to speak, um, is a good thing. And so we want uh, our relative risk to be above one. Um, and again, it indicates a, um, a statistically significant beneficial um, outcome. Um, if we look at 48 hours, uh, we've got three studies um, that measure the outcome of pain relief at 48 hours. Um, and similarly, we do see a beneficial outcome, although it's interesting to note um, that the, um, uh, the strength of, of, of that outcome uh, seems to be approximately half um, at 48 hours when you compare it to um, 24 hours. So hopefully you found that useful. As always, please feel free to contact me uh, via email if you do have any queries. Thank you.